God, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity for Aaron and I to do ministry in this way. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit that gives us the words to say, the words to pray, uh, intercedes on our behalf when we don't know what it is to say. And so we just ask that you speak through us in this uh, YouTube video that you allow um, everything that we say to be beneficial and useful uh, for encouraging those who listen. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. What's up, beautiful people? Shell and Aaron. here at A Radical Relationship, and we are back with another video this week where we are talking about generational curses. The curses on the generations. Mm -hmm. The cycles on the generations. They're real. They are real. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Someone actually kind of opened my eyes um, this past week. That also, you know, generational blessings are a thing as well. Period, poo. So, That's you know, just as out. much as we want to abolish generational curses, we want to step into our generational blessings and um, reclaim those. Period, period. So, um, Aaron and I have been talking a lot about family lately. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about those conversations in another video. Well, like, uh, oh, I was going to. What? You know, you about, can about the poll. Shell did a poll recently. Oh no 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 no! I was talking about the babies. When I say family. Oh, like <laughs> having babies. Yeah. Oh, okay. We ain't pregnant, y'all. I was talking about the other. Yeah, uh, I know. It's funny. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking generation curses. Uh, yes, you are <laughs> definitely on point with that. So, um, we this idea came to mind just because of. What Aaron is talking about, different family situations that had come up. And um, just as we were having conversations about those things, just needing to be just more aware of like what we're bringing into this marriage because of where we come from and how, because this is a kingdom marriage, we have to put ourselves in a position to be different, essentially. And so um, thinking about this video um, I've just been thinking about, you know, what are the things on my end that are those um, unhealthy cyclical patterns um, that I've grown up around that I absolutely do not want to be the case and won't be the case. Like I'm going to fight for that to not be the case uh, with Aaron and I so that everything that comes behind us um, is going to be different, you know. And so one, I think because our marriage um started with god as the foundation off rip we're already setting a different tone like well, our solid. kids are always <laughs> are already going to experience god in a way that we didn't because our marriage was built it was made by god <laughs> like we're only together because of god and so that's the foundation it yes all the other things have come along with it but god legit brought us together and um we have um solid relationships with god where jesus truly is lord of our lives and the bible is our standard and so that's going to introduce our kids to relationship with god in a different way so we're already breaking that cycle and being sure that we absolutely raise our kids up in the fear of the lord for real for real not just being culturally christian and growing up christian the way that we did but culturally being raised christian. yeah being raised with the bible as a standard i was actually thinking about that the other day it's it's different how difficult it was for me to like really follow christ because i was also learning all these worldly things too like for example you know i think we're, the one way we're going to raise our kids differently is they're going to know you know about the holidays and what they represent and what they really are not like oh christmas and santa claus you know all these secular things um that thing kind of get in the confusion a little bit especially when you're younger and you're believing in magic and santa and easter bunny and all these things it kind of just already sets you up for um failure um, and i saw that in my own life you know growing up christian or culturally Christian, but also being exposed to these other things. You know, believing Santa was real probably until I, mean, I was in, I don't know what grade, but I did. And I had fun in those things. But I think it also uh, created, um, created a, <laughs> just a, you know, just a rift. Mm. 
Yeah, um, and then the reverse side of that is being brought up in understanding the spiritual realm, <laughs> understanding that demons are real, you know, that angels are, are real, being brought up with the understanding of the Holy Spirit and how he's here to help us. And again, having all of that start at an early age, not being the parents that's going to choose the way of life for our kids because they're going to have to make Jesus Lord for themselves. But we do intend, you know, on staying faithful and allowing our example and at least what we present to them to set the right foundation should they choose it. Give me cold chills, but I was telling Chell one time I had I had this this vision um, or whatever you want to call it, prophecy or word from the Lord. But he was like, you know what? Um, your purpose, I know what my purpose is, you know, to spread the word, spread the gospel, spread the love of Jesus. But also like our purpose is to make children and raise them in the ways of the Lord. You know, preparing the next generation um, for success in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a huge thing for us. Um, for me as well, I know one thing that um, I've just really just chatted with God about and communed with the Holy Spirit about is just uh, being in a marriage where um, submission is really taking place where I'm not stepping into the headship role even if I make more money or even if I'm um, better at certain things. I've seen that be a pattern in families where uh, women in my family just lead and a lot of the men don't, <laughs> you know, and not necessarily because anybody wants to exert themselves, but it's just that strong black woman thing where like if there's a gap, I'm going to feel it. You know what I'm saying? And so but you see that trickle down in so many ways in the relationship. And so that's something that I try to be super intentional about even with Aaron, because, you know, the first six months of marriage, Aaron didn't have a job. So I was the primary breadwinner. But even in that, I, I was keeping in my mind that doesn't change his role as head of this household. He still has. And I'm 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 blessed and so fortunate that Aaron does not try to exert his dominance because that probably would have caused a lot of conflict, but he can be really humble in that and just, you know, observing what it is and, and, and really accepting my help in areas where he sees that, like, it's just more beneficial for Shell to run with this because she's better at that. Right. And I just feel like he has a good balance of being able to do that, but also healthy convictions about, I also want to step up. You know what I'm saying? And so that's just something that I'm really aware of. And I and I definitely think that God has given me the right right spouse because Aaron isn't definitely isn't somebody who's going to allow himself to be run over in that way. But if mm -hmm. if we're operating in our flesh, we will definitely find ourselves knocking heads around that. If I'm not making an active decision to um, not try to step into the role of head of the household. Yeah, I think I hear that from a lot of people like just what they think the head of the household should be oh you're the man you should make all the money you should pay all the bills you should do all the finances do all these things it's like I, like those are the things i'm not good at <laughs> shell's good at all the finances like getting all that stuff organized but at the same time like um get, man you, you gain favor from your wife and i also believe you know if you're following the lord and seeking him wholeheartedly he's gonna lift you up and he's going to raise you to that position. You know, like Shell said, when we got married, I didn't have a job. Um, and we was praying and seeking, and, you know, Shell's very successful. And I, and I want her to be the best she can be. She also wants me to be the best I can be. But right now, we're really seeing God, because it's all glory to him, raise me up. Um, I just started my own business, doing very well, you know. And in that aspect, it, it's very encouraging. Um, so just... For you guys who are in a situation like us, maybe, or were, um, just be encouraged, you know. Just keep seeking the Lord. Keep uh, pushing forward. Um, keep moving on. But I think um, I wanted to kind of touch base on what has really helped me overcome and uh, generational curses and, like, truly changing my lifestyle and the things that play a role. And I think one of those is stepping into this new life with Shell. I love my family. I love my parents. But you know what? Um, I have a new life. I have a new uh, life to create with Shell. And 
here in Memphis, I love it here, it's home, like we, <laughs> we can tell, you know, we're, we're in a spiritual bubble. I was like, we're in a spiritually charged environment. Like you can just tell, like when we came back home, I was like, man, immediately everything started just changing, just shifting. And it was just like, okay, like awesome. Because when we got back out, you know, we went to go uh, visit family and stuff. Man, the devil was really come. He was, he was really knocking heads. And I told Shell, I was like, man, you know, think about it though. How much would Satan hate it to see some of my family truly make Jesus Lord, truly come to Christ, and overcome some of these things? And when I do go back home, I do see a lot of things that trigger me. You know, I, I start getting. Um, Start, memories start popping up, start seeing places and things and people and old memories start coming up. You know, things that when I'm here in Memphis don't don't happen because I'm creating new memories here. I'm uh, creating a new life here. But when I go back home and I see those things, the old life come, it starts to creep in, all those old demons. And I also believe, you know, demonic possession is territorial, territorial, territorial. <laughs> And I definitely see that when I go back home because all those old demons start creeping in and start whispering in my ear. And I told Shell, I was like, babe, like, I'd love to, but we, we can never move back here. We can never live here, you know? Yeah, what Aaron is saying also just reminds me of the level of intentionality that you have to have when you know that you are trying to do something different that's going to impact generations. And, um... For us, that that just means that like I, I'm reminded of a quote that says something to the effect of heavy is the head that wears the crown. Like, yeah, that crown may look beautiful <laughs> from the outside. Somebody seeing what you what you got. But heavy is the head. That also means that like there are sacrifices that we have to make. And even with Aaron and talking about like not moving back and moving out of that spiritual bubble that we feel we have ourselves here in Memphis when you go out of that you got to be on guard and that's one of the conversations we've had to have that like there's there's too much at stake <laughs> like we have to remember that like we are on a different mission and so satan is going to creep in in any way that he can to be able to divert that or to cause us to stumble or to cause us to get off that and so you go into certain environments and you don't get the liberty or the freedom to let your guard down because it's too much at stake. Now you get around other people who are like-minded and cool. Guards can be down, you can kick it, we cover it. But when you going into spaces that have been the battleground for you in your past, you, you always gotta go uh, arm it up. <laughs> you always gotta stay armored up regardless, but even more so when you literally going into the territory um, where Satan used to have you. That's important. I think it's important to recognize you choose that environment that you stepping into. Um, and I, I actively choose, you know, to, to stay here and stay in this environment, to be in the positively charged environment that's going to help me thrive and grow. And, you know, well, of course, we have to occasionally put ourselves in these other uncomfortable environments, um, but we don't have to do it at the expense um, of ourselves. We don't have to do it, you know, for extended periods of time. We don't mm -hmm. have to put ourselves in these situations um, that could lead to us backsliding or picking up old habits. Um, so I think that's really important to be intentional about too. Like, okay, I'm gonna go, you know, see these people, see my friends, see my family, but for this many days, and then I'm gonna come back to where I need to be. Then I'm gonna be, you know, the other thing that I'm grateful for, to Aaron's point about being in the spiritual bubble, is that a huge part of our spiritual bubble is community. So even for me, having those friends that remind me of what's at stake, that reminds me of, hey, since you fight in a spiritual battle, you ain't, you and Aaron ain't fighting one another, y'all fighting Satan together. Also having friends that God gives visions to on your behalf that can say, hey, I had this vision, this is what the Spirit is showing me, that also can then inform what it is that we are encountering and so having those people um, who are going to just be able to circle around you, right, who are also actively engaged in the battle of fighting their own generational curses to know that like, okay, we're an army together. And so between all of us, you know, in this spiritual community, we're, we're trying to help each other get to the other side. And so uh, one way to identify these quote unquote generational curses, because I feel like that word gets thrown around a lot, is simply to go back and identify the patterns. 
-hmm. what happened with your mom and daddy that also happened with your grandmama and granddaddy that also happened before them a lot of that needs to come through just having straight up conversations with people about like how situations panned out and why they made different choices they made and if you are living a life surrendered to god the holy spirit is also going to reveal things to you and give you that divine wisdom as well for you to be able to pinpoint those spiritual strongholds your family might be talking about things casually and then you hear something that clicks in your mind like hold up that ain't that ain't holy that ain't righteous that ain't the way that it's supposed to be and then you know how to look out for that in your own life and make pivots when I hear generational curses, I honestly, before I used to always think like genealogy, like down the family tree. And I think a lot of people associate generational curses with that. But I think also generational curses are not just tied to our family, but tied to the past times, the times of that generation. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, like me and Shell are already overcoming because she's black and I'm white. You know, and generationally back in a certain time, you know, back when, this, this would not be acceptable. Um, and I think for some people, it still isn't. So right there, that's breaking a generational curse. And, um, and I think kind of, I mean, I, not in my direct family, but um, they, you know, married outside their race. I don't know about you. I um, mean, your family, I don't mm -hmm. think they have. Not, yeah. I mean, people in my generation have, but not in the generations before me. Um, but also something like Aaron is the first um, person that's like in his family that's pursuing ministry. Mm. Um, I'm not the first person in my family to be as heavily involved in ministry as I am. I may be the first person like starting my own ministry that's in some ways. Curse. But yeah, that's what that's what I'm getting to. Like already just like doing something different. Or even like me and most of my cousins are first generation college students. And when I think about most of my friends, mm. they have gone farther in education than the people before them. So even that is a thing of like, okay, we're upping the bar. We're setting a new standard so that the generations that come behind us can build on that. I even see our generation breaking generational curses right now. And it's, it's great. You know, like that shift that's happening all over the world right now from religion to relationship. Mm. Like that's, it's a huge shift and, it, and it's very evident. It's going on, like I was telling Shell, it's like, man, it's crazy. It's, if you haven't realized, like, they've already showed, like, four different uh, Jesus movies, you know, in theaters mm -hmm. this year. Um, and I think we went and saw one, Come Out of the Name of Jesus. Highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing right there that's breaking generational curses is people are coming out in um, deliverance ministry. Something mm -hmm. that's been, I feel, kind of shunned and kind of held down for a really long time you know and these things are starting to come out and people are starting to become free and you're i'm just seeing the holy spirit pour out on his people um in a totally new way and it's it's beautiful to see mm -hmm. yeah so we would love to hear from you all in the comments just what those things look like for you those patterns those cycles those curses that you all are intentionally looking to break. And even if you haven't been intentional, hopefully this video prompts you to start questioning, man, what are those things, those unhealthy patterns, those um, cycles, either within my family or within this generation at large that I'm going to start and look to be intentional about breaking with God. We would love to hear about those things in the comments and just be joining you and praying over those things because Satan don't stop. He's not going to stop until he's ultimately defeated. <laughs> and so um, just be on guard around that and protect what it is that you have in any way that you need to in order to stay on that straight and narrow with God. Good. I, mean, I think we're good. I, yeah, I was gonna say some other stuff, but it was I probably should have said it earlier. Go ahead. <laughs> but I was talking about the movie. I was gonna talk about the movie. Yeah. So like we went and saw this movie come out in the name of Jesus recently. Come out in Jesus' name. Or my bad. Come out in Jesus' name. But um, it was funny to me because we knew at the end there was gonna be after the credits saying we're gonna say a prayer, go through these prayers and praying over um, different demonic oppression and you know. It was crazy to us that they cut it short. I mean, it was it was super cool. This lady was like real bold in the spirit and was like, I just want to pray over Memphis, Tennessee. Everybody started getting in prayer circles. Like literally people were being delivered in the movie theater. Um, everybody was like praying for one another. 
And it was funny to me because I was uh, I left uh, a little bit early. I went outside, um, used the restroom, and and wait. I was I was real tired that night. <laughs> I just got off work and whatnot. But um, I saw the people. Come. It was cool because I, I was able to really observe seeing the people coming and going that were cleaning the theater, who were non-believers, and they're like, man, there's. This is a very unique situation going on right now. They because they were like trying to get the everybody to leave, but they didn't really know how to politely, you know, because they saw that something was happening supernaturally, and it was funny to me that they didn't want to intervene. You know, they didn't want to cut like even the manager went in there. They 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 didn't want to step up and say, "Hey, everybody, you got to leave," because they knew that there was something different going on. And it, man, and I even heard one person, one guy walk by, he's like, man, I don't know what's going on. I think they're like performing exorcisms and stuff in there. <laughs> oh, it was, it was. We just, laughed about that. We were like, the world was so confused. <laughs> right? <laughs> when Christians in there dealing with demons. But like that right there, breaking generational curses. I feel like showing these godly movies in theaters, breaking a generational curse because I was telling Shell, I was like, that's not something that I've ever seen. I think the last Jesus movie I've ever seen in theaters was what, Passion of the Christ. And that was like forever ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's starting to become more and more frequent. And I really, I love to see that. Um, I love to see these generational curses being broken. I love to see people walking in light and in freedom and really embracing that. And one of the ladies there, she came up to me and she prophesied over me and she said, you know what? Um, She says, you come from wealth, you come from these things. She says, claim that. She says, that's a generational blessing. You need to claim that. She says, you're worthy and you can have it too. And I was like, okay. It really kind of opened my eyes to something that I hadn't really been open to before that I never really knew existed. So I was like, okay. So I see the ways my family's been blessed. And when there are people talk about having a strong bloodline and whatnot, it's like, I can reclaim those as well. You know, mm-hmm. um, God wants to do great things in your life yeah so claim it (laughs) so yeah um i would love to hear from you all in the comments as we just talk more about um even just dealing with more things in the spiritual realm like where y'all are at with that like do you believe in demons do you believe in spirits do you believe in deliverance do you not know where you stand with that not trying to get theological or debate or anything like that i'm just genuinely curious for those who um watch our videos and engage with us in that way just just where you stand, honestly, that that's literally the only intent around that. And maybe one day we'll share um, some more videos just of our spiritual journey deeper into those things, deeper into the spiritual mm-hmm. gifts, prophecies that have been sh- um, shared with us. Because I do, do firmly believe that that's just the next level for us. So we've been seeking God a lot about that personally. Yep. God's, man, God's been showing me so much lately. Like, oh, I think one of the main things is... His mercies are new each day. And if you don't live like that, you're not going to fully be able to walk in what God has for you. Um, you know, a lot of times it's like, I was telling Shell, yeah, conviction is from the Holy Spirit. I believe that. But when we go beyond that conviction and we begin to hold on to it as shame and guilt, and you know, it's a burden on us and we're holding on to that thing, we're not letting it go. That's that's not that's not the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit ain't going to tie you down like that. That's demonic oppression (laughs) but um just you know uh if god can forgive you you can forgive yourself and like i really have just been learning how to i guess through experience walk in that recently and man it is just such a blessing so freeing um and i'm really able to be like i guess more joyful and just really walking in what god has for me um knowing that like i am worthy you know today is a new day Today's a fresh start. I don't have to be weighed down by my, the mistakes of yesterday. Sure. Getting a little preaching going on. You know what I'm saying? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Until next time, we are out. Bye, y'all.